Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly. <coughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Frankly FM 84 Big thank you for coming back and joining me on another video right here on the YouTube channel. Today we are on the penultimate episode of the Paris FC rebuild. If you've been around for the past couple of days, you'll have seen we have flown through the first four seasons. We are now at the halfway point of season five. Yesterday we showed you all the players we made in the summer transfer window. Today we have the winter transfer window. We're also going to go through the schedule and show you how we are doing. We're going to see how we're performing in the league. And we aren't going to waste any time on this one. Let's jump straight into it. You can see on the right hand side there have been a lot of players come in and go out of the club. So let's start off. Uh, Sammy Slimmy actually was the first one to go out. He went left on a free but he went in November so... Not a big problem there. He was one of the goalkeepers that had bids for him and was leaving. Uh, Shady Deleste has gone on loan to FCSM. Younes Al Hanach has gone to AS Bovis Ois on loan. Ilias Housney has gone out to get some first team football to Red Star FC. And Junior Niang Niam Baya. Uh, has gone to Nancy on loan. And that means we had some gaps in the squad that we needed to go out and fill. You can see that yesterday, I think we had spent £14.5 million. We have spent another £17 million. And let's show you exactly who that money has gone on. So the first was £7.5 million on Jason Sobney. As I said, we are now at the point in this save at uh, the 4th of February 2026 where we are jumping on the regens. Anybody who is popping up in those big clubs is going to get consideration from us. And this kid just happened to fall in our lap from a scouting report. I think he came from PSG, did he not? No, he came from Nice, sorry, Nice. Uh, we signed so many players from PSG, Nice, Lyon, Saint-Étienne, Marseille. They all just kind of merge into one. But this kid looks like he's going to be a little bit special. We paid £7.5 million for him, but you can see dribbling 16, finishing 14, first touch of 11, technique of 15, teamwork of 12, pace 11, acceleration of 14. So some of the physicals look like the type of player he is, an 18-year-old, but some of the other stats give me real hope that he can just be thrown straight into the team and will play some really good football. Uh, the next player was Julian Brockard. He is a player who we signed and unfortunately wasn't made aware. He had already played for two teams in one season. So one for the future, we'll say. We'll kind of swerve that. We only paid a million pounds for him from a Jackio. But if we were here next season, he would be a left-back first-choice consideration. He has everything you would look for in a left-back. The next player, then, is Mohamed Benoit uh, from Lyon. £4.3 million. He is a left-back and a right-back. So after we uh, saw... The, the other one had already played for two teams. We panicked and went out and bought another left back. And Mohamed Benoit is the player that we got. So he isn't as good as the other left back. But uh, I do think that in time he will develop. He's 17 years old. Not too sure if we can throw him straight in. But looking at his pace, acceleration, bravery, anticipation, decisions, determination. He's got everything that you need to be pushing a player at that age into your first team. The next one is Mikel Chevalier. Another regen who has come from Marseille. So, with this kid, you can see, again, versatility. Plays through the middle, plays out wide. Um, best suited to a deep-line playmaker, it seems to think, here. Uh, looking at his stats, I probably will agree with that. Pace of 13, acceleration of 10. But he's got balance of 15. He has got work rate of 13, vision of 15, teamwork of 16. Decisions of 15, first touch of 14, dribbling of 13, passing 12 and technique 13. So for the price that we've paid, I think this kid could turn into a bit of a bargain. Obviously, we are running out of time. We have only got until June the 1st in tomorrow's episode to get him in the first team and see what he's about. But I have every confidence if we throw him in, he will absolutely play his heart out. The next one and the last one for the save will be Thierry Clement from PSG for £500,000. He can play wide right, he can play through the middle and he can play as a makeshift striker. Uh, finishing the 12, dribbling of 12, pace of 12, acceleration of 14 means he's a work in progress. 19 years old, capped at under 19 level as well. I think PSG probably didn't want to get rid of him, but with PSG squad the way it is, he popped up asking to leave and we swooped in and put him on an eight and a half, what, £8,750 contract and we secured the transfer. So, 
that is the transfers complete for the entire save. In tomorrow's episode, we will finish. So there are no more transfers that are due to come in. In France, I do believe you can sign free transfers, but if there are any under-21s that are out there on a free transfer, I'm not too sure what they are doing in the game. Uh, we then are going to move on. I am not going to show you the schedule straight away or the competitions tab. I'm going to show you the finances and show you what happened with the money then. So we now have £31.6 million in the bank. A transfer budget of £3.6 million. The original budget was 19 so we have spent the majority of that in terms of wages, four hundred thirty-five thousand pound wage budget, and three hundred ninety-three thousand pounds is being spent. So we are running the club to a T, and I think we are going to leave it in a much, much better position than when we found it. Um, I do feel like if we were to run the five years in past this, it would be interesting to see how they can get on. Now their financial status is rich. Could they compete with PSG? I'm not too sure. Watch this space. I might run that in the future. Uh, onto the club vision tab then. So with just a few months left of the save, we are untouchable once again. We have an A plus in terms of what we are achieving. Play counter attacking football is good. Play entertaining football is good. Play attacking football is good. Uh, work within the wage budget. They are happy. Minimum two year contracts for first team players. They're not judging. Spend the original transfer budget, which we did all bar three million pounds. So then at the end of the current season now, they want us to reach the playoffs in the Champions League as a minimum. Past little hint there as to what's happened. Uh, Europa League be competitive. Also a hint as to what has happened. Uh, Ligue 1 mid-table. Delighted. Coupe de France. Reached the 11th round at a minimum. Passed. So we have done that. 26-27 season. Record a Ligue 1 top half finish. We are on course to do that already. I think we have played 19 games at this point and we are already in a position where we are going to be in the top half come the end of the season. The board then being realistic, they only want to maintain that top half finish going forward. So let's hit the schedule tab next and show you how we've been getting on then. If we look for where we came back at the end of that transfer window, um, in fact, did I show you where we come back at the end of that transfer window? Yes, we finished at Ream, didn't we? We won 3-2. So we started off Liga 1 in this part of the game with a 2-2 draw. We then lost to Man City in the Champions League 2-1. Goals from Zabani and Mbappe for Man City. How are you supposed to compete? A 0-0 draw with Lille was followed by a 1-1 draw with Lyon. Nice then absolutely battered us in the league before Borussia Dortmund did the same thing in the Champions League. We then turned it around. I'm not too sure what happened, what changed, but we beat Lens 1-0 and all of a sudden we got ourselves on a little roll. Uh, Marseille, we went there and won 4-2. Ugachukwu, Akale and Fadige with the goals. We beat Shakhtar to get three points in the Champions League. We beat Troyes 3-2 in Liga 1 with a hat-trick for Fadiga. We then beat Shakhtar 2-0 in the Champions League. With goals from Jabby and Watiu. Strasbourg were up next. We knocked them down with a 2-0 victory. We beat Toulouse 1-0 in Liga 1. And we then had a 3-3 draw against Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League to get another point. We rounded off November with a 3-2 victory against Brest. And that meant that we hadn't lost a game since the 4th of October. Or 30th of September if you want to be exact with the date that we lost the game. But the last... A uh, game that we had lost was on that day. And we went through all those games on a good run of form. Uh, going forwards, though, it all turned round again. St Etienne beat us in the league 2-1. And then we got hammered once again 5-0 in the Champions League by Manchester City. But then we turned it around a 6-1 thrashing of Claremont with goals for Betrancourt, Santa Maria, Fadiga, Ugachukwu and Hula Bali. was followed by a 1-0 win in the Coupe de France ninth round with a goal from Betrancourt. Angers were up next. We beat them 6-2. Absolutely swept them aside in the Coupe de France 10th round. Before, we got an impressive draw against PSG. Now, everybody turned up just thinking we were going to get battered. And we put up a really, really good fight. If you look a little bit more in depth, I mean, yesterday we lost the game 1-0 where we only conceded in the 87th minute. Today, we were 2-0 up in the 71st minute and didn't win the game. Lewandowski scoring after 79 and 86 to give them a point is absolutely heartbreaking. Uh, we beat Ren 3-0 in Liga 1 with goals from Ugachukwu and Fadiga. And then we beat Nantes 4-1 in Liga 1 with goals from Betrancourt, Clement, Akali and a nice own goal to help us out. The last game before we came back 
was a 3-2 loss to Bordeaux in the Coupe de France 11th round. So that brings us up to date with the games. Have you been able to top up how many points we've got? Here's the competitions tab and have a look. Yesterday, we were level on points with PSG. Today, we are three points behind after 19 games. This is by far the best we have ever started any campaign in any of these seasons. Maybe barring the Liga 2. Maybe. Um, let's look at it then. So, we are second. Played 19, 113. Goal difference of 22, 43 points. Unfortunately, already given away. We were knocked out in the group stage of the Champions League. We got seven points, though. We put up a really good fight. Dortmund on 10. And Manchester City, though, on 18 going through. We then got put through into the Europa League. And in the first knockout round, first leg, we have been drawn against Rapid Vienna. We were then knocked out in the 11th round by Bordeaux in the... Coupe de France. So not too fussed about the Coupe de France, um, even though the board want us to do something in it. We actually got to the 11th round, which is what they want. They are satisfied with that. Let's have a little look at Liga Un Uber Eats then. Uh, if we look at the table first, as I said, uh, win-loss record is 13-1, 4 drawn, 2 lost, 22 goal difference and 43 points. PSG are top with 19, 14, 4, 1, 35 and 46. So it means we are actually 7 points clear of Marseille at this point of the season and 8 points clear of Monaco. So it's quite impressive. We are closer to PSG than Marseille and Monaco are to us. Leon are completely out of the title race all together. So let's have a look then at the player stats and what has been happening. Milik is now top goal scorer, another 30 plus player who's banging goals in in Liga 1 and Milik has 16. We've got Lewandowski at the age of 37 scoring 14 and Fadiga is how a top goal scorer with 10 from uh, 21 shots and 11 appearances. Most assists, Leslie Ugachukwu. 10 assists from 17 appearances is impressive, and this is exactly why we signed him. But joining him on the board is Florent de Silva. He has 6 from 18 appearances. Um, he also has 71 key passes compared to Ugachukwu's 31. So we'll get to that in a moment. Most shots, Steven Mounier. Uh, he has 92 shots, and luckily we are not represented on there because we are quite efficient with our shooting. Uh, most player of the match awards has gone to Lewandowski with 5. Uh, Fadigat with 3 is our sole representative in joint third. Most key passes then, Josip Bercalo. Uh, he has overtaken Neymar, but Florence Silva is right there with them. He's 13 behind, and he has played one game less but he has played five games more than Neymar. He also has six assists on the season. Best pass completion is not important. Most tackles won. Derek Kutessa. He has 50 tackles won from 16 appearances. Uh, Valentin Lazaro is next. Our sole representative is William Mikel Branches, 21 years old. Uh, 44 tackles won. 15 appearances. And he also has... What was it? Key tackles. He has two key tackles to go with it. Most dribbles made then. Poliara again. This is a player that obviously you need to keep your eyes on if you play with a dribbling tactic. My boy Conrad De La Fuente is up there as well. And unfortunately, we do not have a player on that list. Most clean sheets goes to Isaac Pettersson. And Valentino Lazio is on that list with six. And fewest conceded is Dimitri Bertord uh, with six conceded from seven appearances. And Valentino Lissio is on the list with 17 conceded from 15 appearances. Uh, offsides, absolute random stats pop up, but Akali, 21 offsides. Hadjam, most tackles per 90 minutes. Clearances, Watio, 230 clearances in games, that's impressive. And team goals there, 43 for a host of players, and Bondo on 40. Two. So the last thing to look at then, moving into the last part of the season, is what the assistant thinks is our best 11. Lejure in goal, Hadjam, Koulibaly, Watio, Mikael Branches, Bondo, De Silva, Ugachukwu, Santa Maria, Fadiga and Akali up top. So still there are players in there that we have signed that have not made it into the first team. I mean, where's Betracourt? He's been absolutely balling out and uh, he's not even in there. So maybe the assistant and I have a different opinion of what our first 11 should be, but it also gives me an idea that we are pretty weak on the left wing, pretty weak at left back. And even though it says De Silva's only a three star, I think he's absolutely fantastic as a footballer. 
So that is the squad locked in for the rest of the save. If you come back tomorrow, you will find out how we get on. We are currently three points behind in the league. We have a Europa League campaign now to look forward to. Also, how is it going to finish? How do you think it's going to finish? Let me know in the comment section down below how you think we are going to get on. Can we do any well or do any good in the Champions League? Will we do well to get anywhere near PSG? Let me know what you think. For this one though, if you're still here at this point of the video and you're still listening to me, firstly, a big thank you. I really do appreciate it. Secondly, if you don't mind hitting the like and subscribe button to help the channel out, I really, really do appreciate everybody who takes their time to do that for me. But for this one, I'm going to wrap it up. Go and check another video on the channel and I'll see you very soon.